Well, good afternoon. Um, hopefully by now you've probably figured out this is actually uh, a recorded version of our Wednesday devotional. Um, unscheduled things have happened uh, this week to cause uh, kind of some changes, a ripple effect uh, in my schedule. So today I I'm doing a pre-recorded devotional. So thank you for joining me this day for what, what, well, whatever day this may be that you're joining me. Uh, if you have your lint in a bag items, make sure you have your palm ready. No worries if you don't have your lint in a bag, you can follow along without those because I've been kind of following this devotional in our lint in a bag, uh, but I've also embellished it a little. Also, I hope you'll join me next week on, uh, on Wednesday, our last, our very last 4 p.m. Lenten devotional. The season of Lent flew by. So now let us center ourselves for a moment, letting go of the busyness of the day or let go of the stuff of the day, that stuff that swirls around in our minds, all this stuff that wants to take up space uh, where it shouldn't. Let us pause for some silence, and then I'll open us up in a prayer. So now let us focus our minds, our hearts, and our spirits on the Lord. Oh, deep breath. Let it out. Let us go to the Lord in silence. O oh God of strength and enduring grace, as we begin our devotional today, we pray that we would hear your voice. We ask that your Holy Spirit would be at work, opening our ears to hear our hearts, to receive your word. Throughout this Lenten season, as it draws to a close, oh, may we continue to be transformed into your likeness, to be you through our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, our symbol again is that palm branch. It's a symbol for this celebration we hear about today in our passage, right? The waving of the palms. And it really was an amazing scene. Jesus had just raised Lazarus from the dead. The masses, masses, they've gathered in preparation for the Passover feast. Jesus was experiencing peak popularity. There was hysteria, lots of shouting, singing, and anticipation. No one except Jesus knew what was going to happen next. I will now read about Jesus's triumphal entrance into Jerusalem as found in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. Hear are these words of the Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the roads, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. And those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, blessed is the coming of the kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest heaven. And he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the 12. Here ends the reading of the word. Well, our theme today is faithfulness. That's, that's a timely one, isn't it? Faithfulness, faithfulness. 
We are nearing the end of our Lenten journey, and as disciples of our Lord, we remember, we remember every year the events of long ago when those 12 disciples entered Jerusalem with Jesus and deserted him a few days later. We remember that in our own lives when things go well, we often know God is with us, but when we are afraid, when we are at risk, we may, may abandon our faith. So this day we light this candle as a symbol of our trust in Jesus Christ that God will always remain faithful even when we lack faith. Well, I love a parade, a good parade, especially those in small towns. I just love a small town parade. Uh, the high school marching band, the funny floats, VIPs riding in a convertible, fire trucks and ambulances blaring their horns, much to the delight of children. And then of course the tossing of candy, right? Well, Jesus' triumphal entry parade was no different. It's a parade. There was a jubilant atmosphere among the people of Israel on the first day of the week when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the donkey. The people had waited a long time for the promised Messiah. Since the time of Abraham, they had longed to see this promised king. But this king did not look as they would have expected. Kings rode on horses. This king rode on a donkey. Kings were adorned in royal apparel. This king wore the clothes of an humble peasant. Kings were accompanied by an entourage of fighting men. This king rode in alone, followed only by a few friends. Kings had many servants. This king served many. Kings ruled over people. This king ministered to the people. Kings feasted on sumptuous food prepared for them. This king multiplied fish and loaves to feed others. Kings wore crowns of gold and precious gems. This king soon wore a crown of thorns. Kings made loud proclamations and the people were silent. This king was stood silent when the people yelled, crucify him. Kings were protected at all cost. This king soon gave his life, paying the cost of all sin. This king was unlike any other, and yet when this king rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, he was hailed by the people like a rock star in our present age. And you know, I always ask the question to uh, parishioners or of parishioners, where do you see yourself in this story? Where do you see yourself? What would you would have been the one, you know, taking the palm and standing, waiting for the king, not really understanding everything, but waving it anyway. This had to be the Messiah. Or maybe would you have been on the sidelines? The sidelines, part of the religious establishment, suspicious of this foolish man on a donkey, this rebel rouser. Would you be glad? Would you be glad to see Jesus, the Lord Jesus? Or, or would you not quite be sure of his message? The psalmist writes these words about the Lord in the time of King David. I would invite you to ponder the words of the psalmist. Hear these words. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in your works of your hands. O oh Lord, how great are your works. I'll be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O oh thou most high. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. 
<laughs> Hear the words, the words of praise. Would you have uttered such words as King Jesus entered Jerusalem as, as he rode by you on that donkey? Do you utter such words nowadays, especially in this time of pandemic? I'll reread the words from the devotional again. The palm branch is a symbol for celebration. It really was an amazing scene. Jesus had just raised Lazarus from the dead. The masses gathered in preparation for the Passover feed. Jesus was experiencing peak popularity. There was hysteria, lots of shouting, singing, and anticipation. Sadly, no one, no one except for Jesus knew what was going to happen. And you know, life is often that kind of roller coaster has been this year for sure, ups and downs. <laughs> the roller coaster of extreme highs and extreme lows with life lived primarily in between. So I would invite you to reflect on those times. We did a little bit of that during our Advent study. What, what's the best part of your week? What's the worst part of your week? <laughs> what's the extreme high in your life right now? What's the extreme low in your life right now? I can't help but think of the many grandparents that are getting to see their grandchildren for the very first time in a long, long year, but yet, so many are still not vaccinated, the waiting to be vaccinated, longing, longing. Or have you experienced God the most here of late in that extreme high or in that extreme low? And then in the highs and the lows, we always look for Jesus, right? We always look for Jesus every day, keeping our eyes on him. We find that in Hebrews, you know, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. We, and we joyfully look forward to the day, whether it be in our lifetime or, a, well, a time far in the future when Jesus will return. And then when Jesus will return as the King of Kings to judge and reign, and rule over the earth. Our sins always are paid for and we belong to the King. We are all worthy. Every single one of us, we are all worthy to be included in his kingdom now and forevermore. And we are always glad to see him. And as we look to Jesus on this coming Palm Sunday and consider the beginning of his journey to the cross, may we remember our symbol next week is a cross. It's the cross. We'll also be in the middle, in the middle of Holy Week, just a couple of days from Good Friday and darkened skies. So with that in mind, I would invite you to find a way, find a way to share your light this week, especially in a way the light would bring, uh, oh, would bring brightness to someone in darkness. Someone in darkness. When we share our light, sometimes we can help others see Jesus and experience Jesus for the first time just by sharing our light. And there are so many ways you can share your light, even with the limitations of the pandemic. Whatever action you choose, may your light bring a sense of hope and healing to someone. Let us now pause and I'll end us in prayer. So, oh Lord, as we spend this time, oh, this moment, this pause in silence and reflection, Lord, we visualize and we lift up all of those things that are heavy on our hearts, all those things that we need some light. So Lord, we, we ask those in our mind and our spirits and our, oh, our hearts, Lord, those things that weigh us down. Lord, we, we lift those to you now 
we give them to you, Lord, and we lay them at your cross, the foot of your cross. Oh, Holy One, Triumphal One, you have journeyed with us through the valley of the shadow and will see us to the other side. We give thanks and rejoice for that day of resurrection. Help us, O oh Lord, to remain faithful to you even in times of deepest doubt. As we continue our journey towards the cross almost to the end, May we continue to experience your light and share you with the world. Help us grow in our faithfulness to you, O oh Lord. Amen. Well, thank you for tuning in today. I look forward to seeing you next week. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.